Hello, in this presentation, I want to show you, how is possible to analyze constraints in product and part, and obtain a text list with broken ones, in order to correct them. Starting with a test assembly, using parts in folder, then running macros, from other folder. The usual way to obtain this, is like presenting, from analyze menu, select constraints, and the analyze window appears, showing all constraints status. But from here, I only can make a screen capture, to save the broken constraints, if there are some. From tools menu, next macros, I will select and run, corresponding macro for assembly, as shown. First message, will count all the constraints, next message, will indicate if there are or not, broken constraints. Next macro, will do the same, but in this case, will detect if the active document, is a part or product, then will run according to case. Next, I will open a part, containing constraints. Constraints are created, to put the linked part, in the desired position. I will load the linked part, into active one, then, I will open it. In this part, the nut body, was published, next copied and pasted with link, into previous part. Next, I will run the macros, first only for part, next, according to cases. The messages, indicating the number of constraints, and after the broken constraints are working. In usually parts, there are no constraints. In complex ones, containing some constraints, as presented, from my experience, there are small chances to have broken constraints, maybe only when the linked part geometry is modified. I will open a simple part, without constraints, and run again the macro, the result is as shown. Back to assembly, I will replace an existing part, with another one, in session, in order to have some broken constraints. Now, as you can observe, the last three constraints are broken, next, I will run again the macros, to see how they work, in this case. First message, is counting the total constraints, next, will appear messages, for each broken constraint, and in parallel, the broken constraints, are added to selection and written to a text file, saved on desktop. This is useful, in case of large assemblies, with a lot of constraints, in order to keep evidence, of what should be repaired. Now, as you can observe, the text file was saved on desktop, with Kasha file name and extension, as presented. Next, I will group a constraint in a set, and see if the macro works. As you can see, it works, and the broken constraints are selected, wherever they are, in set or not. Next, I will close all opened files, without save, and reopen the assembly.
Next, I will show and explain the code behind the macros. The code is accessible from Kasha internal VBA editor as presented or by opening the CADBS files containing macros with Notepad. So, the first macro is working, only for part files, as is declared in start lines. Then, first message box, is counting all the constraints, next, is to find the path and file name of the text file, where will be stored, the broken constraints. Next, all the constraints, are checked, one by one, if they are broken. If they are not broken, will be skipped, otherwise a message box, indicating broken constraint name is shown, and the constraint will be added to current selection, and written in the text file. The next broken constraint, is appended in the text file. After last constraint is checked, the text file is opened and checked, if it's empty or not. In case if it's not empty, then appears a message box, indicating that a text file containing list of broken constraints, was saved on desktop. Next, if text file is not empty, it will be opened. It's also possible, to open the folder containing the file, if necessary. In case that text file, is empty, a message box, indicating that there are not broken constraints, appears, and the text file is deleted from desktop. I will open the file containing the macro, for assembly case, which is pretty much the same as for part, and compare them side by side. As you can observe, the starting lines are different, according to part or product, but the rest of code, is almost the same. Next file, contains the macro working for both cases, part, or product. First, is checked if active file, is a part or a product, then our used case, to combine the previous two macros, in only one. In case of part, the code is taken from first macro, but only the different one, from product. Same with code for case product. At the end of cases, we'll run the common code, for part, and assembly, same in both previous macros. Of course, you can adapt this code to your needs, by changing text file location, or suppress message boxes for individually broken constraints, or by adding for protection only, drawing case to eject from macro. I hope, you will find useful, this presentation, until next one, I wish you all the bests.